We often think of an ecosystem as the relationships among the plants and animals in an area. But this definition omits a key element of any ecosystem, the environment. The biota in an area evolved to cope successfully with the challenges of the local environment. Before we can understand the local ecosystem, we need to understand the local environment, which is the Sonoran Desert. What's a desert? The usual definition involves some maximum amount of annual rainfall, like 10 inches. But Tucson and many parts of the McDowell Sonoran Preserve average more rainfall than that, and they're certainly in the Sonoran Desert. Apparently, we need a better definition. Imagine an experiment. Put a six foot tall glass cylinder that's open at the top, out in the preserve, away from trees and buildings. Put an automatic rain gauge on the ground nearby. At the very beginning of the year, fill the glass cylinder with five feet of water. Return to the glass cylinder one year later. Suppose the rain gauge reports that exactly one foot of rain fell during the year. The cylinder started the year with five feet of water and a foot of rain fell during the year. So how much water will you find in the cylinder after a year? The most likely answer is no water at all. What happened? The water evaporated during the year. In fact, that's the definition of aridity, what we commonly think of as a desert. Deserts are places where there's much more water lost to evaporation and transpiration by plants than water gained from rainfall. Places where the ratio of water loss to water gain is greater than five or six to one are arid. They're deserts. The basic cause of aridity is dry air, which quickly evaporates any available water and doesn't provide much precipitation. In other words, dry air causes both characteristics of aridity, high evaporation and low rainfall. There are four main causes of deserts around the world. The first is called the 30 degree latitude effect. If you look at a map of the earth and identify the areas at 30 degrees north and south latitude, you'll notice that many of the world's deserts are clustered on the west coast of continents there. Here's why this happens. Warm, dry air from the equator descends to the surface in these latitudes. The prevailing winds at these latitudes are from the west. Dry air can't pick up much moisture from the ocean because there are cold, dry currents off the west coasts at these latitudes. The combination produces a steady flow of dry air that dries out the west coasts of all the continents at 30 degrees north and south, creating and sustaining deserts there. The northern Sahara and Kalahari deserts are examples of this effect. The second cause is the rain shadow effect caused by mountain ranges. Air is forced upward over mountains, and it cools as it ascends. 
cool air can't hold as much water vapor as warm air. So most water vapor condenses out of cool air at high elevations and falls as precipitation on the windward slopes of mountains. Once over the mountains, the air warms up as it descends, but now it's dry, resulting in a steady flow of warm, dry air on the downwind side of mountain ranges. This creates aridity. The Great Basin and Patagonian deserts are rain shadow deserts caused by the Sierras and the Andes, respectively. The third cause is obvious, being a very long way from any substantial source of water like an ocean. If the nearest ocean is thousands of miles away, any moisture from it already has condensed out of the air and fallen as precipitation along the way. The Gobi Desert in Central Asia is an example. All three of these causes are stable over long periods. After all, mountain ranges last for millions of years, and the continents don't move around very fast. So once deserts are established, we'd expect them to remain largely unchanged. Yet the desert biome is expanding globally. Why is this happening? The reason is the fourth cause, desertification. This is a process in which dry land becomes increasingly arid. It's the result of climate change, which is projected to expand aridity in many areas globally, and also direct human activity like overgrazing, development, deforestation, and the cultivation of marginal land. All of these processes lead to a decline in vegetation, which results over time in exposed, dry, hard, and eventually unproductive soil. Now that we've talked generally about deserts, how does this relate to our Sonoran Desert? Our desert is unusual and interesting in a variety of ways. First, it has two different causes. The southern portion in Baja California and mainland Mexico is a 30 degree latitude desert while the northern portion in Arizona and southeastern California is a rain shadow desert. The northern Sonoran Desert formed about 9 million years ago when tectonic activity lifted up mountains in western Mexico, along the southern California coast, and the Colorado Plateau. This cut off the interior area, especially in the north, from major water sources. Since it formed millions of years ago, the Sonoran Desert has expanded and contracted many times due to the same climate changes that produced the ice ages globally. The most recent form of our desert emerged only about 9,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age. And the flora and fauna we see today have been stable in this area for less than 5,000 years. In fact, the desert as a whole and our preserve continue to change today due to development, local heating and pollution, changes in water use, and other factors. Even natural ecosystems and conserved open spaces are never static. The Sonoran Desert is the most ecologically diverse North American desert, and many factors contribute to its diversity. Key among them is that it rarely freezes here. Because of this, many of our local species, like columnar cactus, are tropical in origin. But the distinguishing characteristic of the Sonoran Desert and the most important source of its diversity 
are its two periods of substantial rainfall. Winter storms produce widespread, steady rains that may last several days. Summer storms produce localized, sometimes heavy thunderstorms. Getting substantial rainfall during both winter and summer reduces stress on plants and animals in a challenging environment. In the next segment, we'll explore some of those challenges faced by the plants and animals that live here.